Um, uh, thank you all for uh, joining us in this special event with uh, Waypur World Association for Public Opinion Research with our uh, WANA chapter. This is a very pleasure to um, uh, lead this session uh, because uh, this is our start for the WANA chapter where we will be speaking with uh, three experts about public opinion research in the Middle East. And we will have uh, Nabil and Faris and Munqith, whom I will be introducing in just a few minutes. Uh, since we ta talked about the WANA chapter, uh, it's my pleasure as the president of this uh, newborn chapter from uh, way, uh, way poor organizations that uh, it was approved during uh, Marrakesh uh, annual uh, way poor chapter. And uh, then uh, we opened the membership uh, after uh, one year and we have different members, uh, even from the participants we have today. So we really uh, encourage uh, all the people who are hearing us to join the chapter that we will hope that uh, starting from 2022, we will have uh, different activities. Um, we are having three uh, 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 speakers today. Uh, the first one, uh, if Nabil just came, you just can say uh, salam or hi. Uh, he will be talking about uh, pooling institutions between uh, the trust and mistrust of the different actors. Nabil is the founder and president of Amurhod, consultant market and public research based in uh, Tunisia. And you can see the full uh, brief about him uh, in the slides. So, uh, and then we will have, Nabil, are you there or still? Fine. Uh, since Nabil may be, Late, we will start with uh, Dr. Faris Fars Brezat, is the founder and chairman of Nama Strategic Intelligence Solutions uh, based in Amman. And uh, as you can see, a uh, brief about uh, him, uh, also well known uh, figure in the uh, public opinion research in the Arab world. And then we will have Dr. Munpiz uh, Dagger, uh, who is the founder and chairman of the uh, uh, independent Institute of uh, Institute of Administration and Civil Societies Studies, and he has a long experience in Iraq and uh, uh, different memberships and different leader of uh, international projects. So uh, let's start with Faris. You may uh, share your screen, uh, Dr. Faris. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, just let me do the technical stuff here. Is it shared already? Just make sure it's shared. Is it shared now? Yep. Yes. Excellent. Um, thank you very much for arranging this, um, Samer, and uh, thanks to everyone who has been involved in this um, effort. Um, I think it is uh, essential that we continue to do these um, activities. And I'd like to thank everyone who was involved, uh, Xenia and um, all the um, uh, people who were involved in organizing the um, WANA chapter and also the country representatives from um, across the region and globally. And I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome um, everyone who has joined us um, uh, from the region and uh, from other uh, places as well. Um, today, I will be talking about um, the relationship or the relevance of survey research to public policy. Um, what is the role of the state government? Is it enabler or regulator or investor or as business owner? Such questions are extremely relevant and important for researchers in, in public policy as well as um, survey research. For example, when we ask about um, a certain policy, what direction um, should the government take? Um, should it be a capitalist country or a socialist country or a social democratic country or a liberal country or a libertarian um, country in terms of economy or the political system? 
Now, whether uh, regardless, uh, these positions would be implemented through uh, public policies. So these public policies will have to go through a certain set of processes, political processes, economic processes. Um, one of those is the um, regulatory public policy and public policy is divided into many um, uh, fields and, and subsectors and subfields. One of them is regulatory public uh, policy, such as constitutional and legal frameworks that govern relationships between different state institutions and society. Um, uh, they regulate the business environment, for example, uh, tax, um, exponential or flat rate, uh, what kind of tax people prefer, what kind of tax the legal system would allow or wouldn't allow. Some constitutions, they have a very specific um, stipulation that um, taxes must be exponential, others uh, they um, state flat rate. So where do people stand on these um, issues? The other type of um, public policy is the distributive uh, public policy where it, in, it involves enabling and protecting, enabling people and protecting the weak in society through, our, through different um, policies such as the education, the health, the environment, transportation and the welfare. Now all these policies, they come to substantial public policy and those require certain frameworks. Um, and in order to achieve meaningful and um, uh, fruitful uh, public policy, we have to use data. And that data is divided into two types, either hard data, which is usually macro level economic data, or soft data, such as public opinion data drawn um, from surveys or social media listening or big data mining or artificial intelligence or Internet of Things and uh, the like. Um, you know, we depend largely on surveys and all the data that I will be using today for this uh, presentation is uh, driven um, from uh, survey research and survey research um, in our region, as it is in other countries, um, were, you know, collected in a data collection environment and that data collection environment, it has two um, main, um, uh, main factors, if you wish the political regime type or the type of political system that we work with in a given country and the openness to surveys of that political system. And in a democratic country, uh, the system will be open for um, survey research. In a semi-democratic um, system, it will be semi-open. Sometimes you will be allowed to do research. Some other times you will not be allowed. Some questions might not be um, allowed, etc. And we have seen this in the uh, you know in the past 25 years in the uh, in the Arab world. I have been doing this this for uh, the past 25 years, and we have been through quite a lot of those. Semi-authoritarian, which is semi-closed to survey research, where it takes um, a lot of effort to convince um, the authorities in a given country um, to conduct a survey there. And um, sometimes you have to compromise by eliminating um, a third of your questionnaire, sometimes more, um, if you were allowed to uh, field it in that country. Authoritarian regimes usually largely closed for survey research, and it's very hard to implement. Now, with the advancement of um, social media and online, uh, one can um, do surveys, but reliability and validity of the data you get is largely biased because of um, um, you know access to internet. Some people feel probably uh, some sort of um, digital um, censorship or cyber uh, surveillance and all of that. Um, let me uh, go to the some examples of public policy questions that we usually deal with as political scientists or sociologists or people who work with public opinion. For example, today there is a big debate in Jordan on whether um, uh, we want a private or public ownership of business. And this is where, after we have passed the um, Royal Committee's um, reform um, agenda, um, and now it's in Parliament for uh, approval, um, this debate started to shape up and to um, be... Um, discussed, these ideas started to be discussed by certain individuals and groups who are, uh, one, one may call them newcomers or new groups emerging on the political scene in the country. 
that applies to income equality. Is it, do we have to, or income equality, do we have to have everyone equal or there must be a variation in income between people as incentives? The other question is individual or state responsibility. Do people want individuals to be responsible for their own um, uh, issues or they prefer um, a state responsibility for that? Competition, is it good or bad? Uh, do people think it's good or bad? Success, is it hard or a matter of luck? Is it hard work or a matter of luck? Foreign relations, how do people perceive foreign relations of a given country? Political participation, municipal elections, how can we encourage more people to participate? And on what issues? Um, political participation on parliamentary elections. Um, how can we re-engage more youth and women in, in the political process? Candidacy age reduction. What policy should we pursue in order to um, be uh, aligned with our own needs and also with the international standards in terms of um, age, candidacy age reduction? I'll take you through some of the data, which is drawn from a variety of, um, of sources. Um, uh, this, uh, this data set is uh, drawn from the World Value Survey and we have Xenia with us here. Uh, the World Value Survey, uh, probably all of you know the World Value Survey, and this one is about income differences and incentives. Uh, the data shows uh, us two things, basically. The average of all waves, we need th those who said we need larger income differences as incentives. And compared to the latest wave of the World Value Survey data in Jordan and other countries, uh, which was conducted 2018 to 2020, um, look, for example, at the um, triangle, the, um, sorry, the, yeah, the um, red uh, box here on the left of the screen, where 81% of Jordanians believe that um, we need larger income differences and incentives. Uh, this is going up compared to the average previous um, uh, waves of the World Value Survey in Jordan and for increased from 75 to 81% compared to other countries such as Iraq, for example, which has um, uh, decreased uh, from 43 to um, 39. And with the countries in between, including Sweden, which has increased from 55 to 65%. Uh, the other one is a competition. Is it good or um, bad? The overwhelming majority of Jordanians think um, competition is good and th these are um, implications for public policy. Um, the same um, applies to hard work. Um, does it generally uh, bring uh, success or it's a matter of luck um, and connections? Again, we have 79% of Jordanians and the latest wave of the World Value Survey believe it is um, hard work brings um, success. And compared to other countries, Jordan is faring pretty um, well. Uh, on the, um, uh, the issue of private ownership of business um, should be increased or not, Jordanian public opinion is quite um, uh, any different on that from the previous uh, slides we shared. 54% uh, of Jordanians in the latest wave of the World Value Survey I lean more towards um, private ownership of uh, business. It has increased compared to the previous, previous waves, but still our society is um, almost split on that issue. These are the implications that when we talk about public policy design, what, um, how are we going to deal with, um, with people? Um, are we going to, uh, what kind of messages we're going to send to them? And this has to do with the national psyche of um, the Jordanian society and the, probably any other society um, where people would rather have more government um, uh, role and uh, government ownership of business. In Jordan, for example, when we ask them about uh, people should take more responsibility or um, uh, to provide for uh, themselves or government should uh, make sure or should ensure everyone is provided for. Um, we see here that 13% uh, of Jordanians uh, only believe that people should be should take more responsibility while, it, while in other countries such as in, in Iraq, for example, it's 83 and every country has its own context. But if we look at established democracies, um, majorities of people like in Sweden and the UK, 
believe that people should take more uh, responsibility. And that has to do with the evolution. For example, in Jordan, we had a few decades of similar economy, not um, a rentier economy, similar economy. And that economy has already changed, I think, big time because today foreign aid accounts only for 10 percent of government expenditure and uh, government uh, revenue or 11 percent of um, uh, revenue and um, 9% of um, uh, uh, expenditure. Um, moving to another subject, uh, foreign relations, which is again another public policy issue. Um, we asked in our, one of our recent surveys, um, a percentage of um, Jordanians descri describing political relations very good or somewhat good between Jordan and the United States and other countries. If you look at the left side of the chart, 68% uh, of Jordanians either describing relations very good or um, 68 very good and um, 26 somewhat good, which is a huge um, uh, difference compared to other countries. The only two countries that are uh, perceived in a less favorable way, Israel and uh, Iran. And throughout uh, this um, research project that we have been working on, and this is the third wave of this uh, project, uh, we are always trying to bring public opinion uh, to the public policy debates, including on foreign policy. And that is that proved very helpful for policymakers as well as for uh, people who try to understand the dynamics of Jordanian American and Jordanian Saudi and Jordanian Egyptian relations in particular. Um, another issue with, to do with the international relations is how would you describe political relations between the Jordanian and the American governments? And this uh, between 2004 and 2021. So we're talking about um, a large number of years. Um, in 2021, we have recorded the highest percentage of Jordanians describing these relations as um, very good. And it has been improving. Um, and the 2004 survey was taken after the invasion of Iraq, in which Jordanian public opinion was adamantly against that um, um, invasion. Still, uh, despite that, 57% described relations, political relations with the U.S. as very good and 31% as somewhat good. So despite the fluctuations, still we don't see um, um, any change in trend. Uh, and the change in trend we see is a tie, the, the change of a degree, not of type of position that Jordanian public opinion uh, displays vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, relations with the, United, with the United States or political relations with the United States. The other uh, thorny issue in these relations is the uh, U.S. position on the Arab-Israeli conflict again comparing 2004 to 2021 and what's in between. How satisfied are you with the way the United States is handling the Arab-Israeli conflict? Uh, today we have 83% are very unsatisfied. So again, uh, we have an overwhelming majority of Jordanians who either are very unsatisfied or somewhat unsatisfied with, with that. Again, that policy did not color the bilateral relations between Jordan and the United States. Still, uh, people uh, describe these relations are very good or somewhat good. Or when we ask them about what would you like to do with these relations, would you like to improve the, or strengthen them or keep them as they are? Overwhelming majority, again, said either they want to strengthen these relations or keep them as they are. And only a very tiny minority chose to limit uh, these relations. Another um, example, public policy example on municipal elections, we will be having elections in Jordan on the 22nd of March, municipal elections or local um, governance uh, elections. Um, I'd like just to draw your attention to this one, which is a correlation between um, the direction of the country where people think the country is going. Is it going in the right direction to a great extent or to some extent or going the wrong direction to some extent or um, wrong direction totally. This correlation is quite interesting because um, it has very serious implications for public policy and for campaigning and for strategic communications with candidates and with the Independent Elections Commission and also everyone else involved in the um, election uh, process. Where we can see, as you can see in the yellow line here, um, that the percentage of people who are not going to participate at all in the uh, uh, upcoming parliamentary elections tend to increase as their 
uh, position on the country's uh, direction is more negative or they think the country is going in the wrong uh, direction um, uh, totally. And this is um, a very interesting phenomenon to watch and to see what kind of policy um, policy uh, interventions that... Uh, two minutes, huh? Okay. Uh, what government interventions should be, what interventions government and others should be taken in order to uh, address that issue. Um, to run quickly um, on a major issue that I have worked on recently, on um, participation in the parliamentary elections of 2020, um, just to quickly to say that we, the participation rate was uh, around 30%, 29.9%. Um, what I'd like you to pay attention to on this chart is the age group 17 to 25, and this is their participation divided into males and um, females. And compare that to the age group 26 to 30. What we can see here is a huge, um, what I would call migration outside of the political or the electoral system by younger um, uh, groups of, um, of people, especially the males, for example, 43% um, of them, uh, of those who are 27, 25, participated. And the next group, um, 28 point, which is a huge difference, a huge shift and that's what, what I would call migration outside the electoral process. And the other point uh, I'm showing here is the difference between male voters and female voters. There is on average a, an eight points national difference, national difference and 10.5 among the um, age group 17 to 25 um, where less women participate in elections uh, than, than men. And um, so what can can we um, present a solution to this problem? Um, we looked at uh, different um, um, uh, uh, points in time and I asked a question back in 2018, whether you would like to reduce candidacy age to parliament from 30 to a lower age. Um, on on, tot uh, on uh, uh, the total, 68% um, of adult Jordanians, they wanted to keep the um, um, candidacy age at, um, um, at 30. Um, only 2% uh, wanted that to be reduced to 18 to um, 24. Um, and um, it was um, interesting to, uh, when we went through the negotiations during the Royal um, Committee to Modernize the Political System, I adopted the view that we should reduce it to 18 um, to be consistent with international standards. Um, as you can see in this table here, like, like Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Luxembourg, ne Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Austria, Germany, Slovakia, etc. All these countries, they have the same age candidacy and um, election um, age. The countries that Jordan shares the age of 30 um, with are Iran, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, and um, Oman. So... Um, therefore, I, we proposed that change. During the negotiations, we came up with a solution and we, it was reduced to a 25 down from um, 30. Um, and the public opinion shifted a little bit after that. This data is from uh, a recent poll published by the Center for um, Strategic Studies just a couple of days ago. Um, in which 54% um, uh, uh, of Jordanians approve or strongly support um, reduction of age from 30 to um, 25. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. I just uh, tried to take you quickly through some of the major public policy issues that we work on. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Faris, for this uh, all the time. Uh, attractive subject and topic to talk about how relevant our work to uh, public policy. I just remember Ibrahim Lincoln when he said, uh, what I wanted to, to do is what the people want. So the question is, how do I know what people want? So we're trying to make it easier for uh, policymakers. Uh, okay, let me move to Nabil. Nabil, I see him now uh, here. Hello, Nabil. And uh, but he's uh, he is he is logged in with Munzir uh, Munzir's name. So you are both welcome. طيب نبيل, uh, you will be talking about uh, political institutes between uh, uh, the trust and mis mistrust of the different actors. Uh, Nabil, go ahead. The floor is yours.
اوكي ثانك يو فيري ماتش سمير اند مرحبا اهلا ومرحبا كل اخوان هاي ايفريبادي اي ابولوجايز فور ذا ديلاي بيو هاف ا ليتل بروبلم اوف كونكشن سو نو اتس اوكي سو ويلكم تو اول بارتيسيبانتس اي ام اي ام اي ام فيري هابي تو to present uh, these topics uh, today with you, with uh, Wepar uh, webinar. So, um, uh, it, it's my personal history uh, here, uh, experience in, in, in Tunisia. Uh, when I chose the polling institute between the trust uh, and mistrust for different actors, it's um, our experience, it's our uh, um, history Uh, in conducting political and opinion poll in, uh, in Tunisia. Since the revolution in 2011, we conducted uh, polls uh, in, uh, in, in mainly political issues, and uh, we are usually faced to this balance between uh, trust and mistrust, uh, critics, etc. So, just today, uh, in a few minutes, I would like to share you this experience with my colleagues and everybody uh, everywhere. Uh, and uh, to uh, advance in this uh, uh, reflection. So <clears throat> as part of uh, this uh, interventions, we will, of course, uh, talk about the polls published in the media. I'm not speaking about polls confidential or uh, specially commanded by, 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 uh, by clients uh, uh, or uh, other things. So uh, as an um, omnipresent pollster in the public uh, space in Tunisia through the monthly publication of our political barometer, I can't stop thinking and wondering about the notion of trust or uh, distrust and what I do. It's usually issue, usually uh, question. It's in fact for this reason that I want to share this with you. And as long as this is a problem of uh, precision linked to the lack of visibility in political life and expressed a large number of undecided people, there are always criticisms. Also, as long as there is volatility in voter choices, especially caused by a big event in the political scheme atmosphere, there are always critics. As long as it comes out from time to time, a bad survey made by any intruder or an unknown pollster, for example, there are always critics. This is the reality that we are living. Too many criticism, it creates distrust of the polls. And in all cases, so, and like in other, other information, the results of the polls are not apprehended in complete neutrality, but with, with expectations value and preliminary uh, orientation, which are certainly not without consequence and the way in which individuals interpret and give meaning to this information. On the and way, Ariel, excuse me, do you have a presentation you wanted? Because do you uh, want Yes, I shared it, but I sent my presentation to Xenia. I shared it. Ah, so we can, uh, Xenia, you can make the screen share. Is it easy for you or? Okay, let me. <laughs> okay, you can continue until she get the screen uh, share showing in front of us. Go ahead, Nabi. Nabi, you can connect. Okay. Then you can look. So it's a. Uh... Is it okay for you? Yeah, you can continue until we see the screen share, uh, Nabil. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, okay. So, um, when now we would like to uh, speak about actors, uh, who are these actors? So, uh, actors, are, we, we can't... We, We have four categories of actors. So political, politics separated by leaders and political parties, for example. We have the media, we have government and civil society and electors. 
So when we conduct political uh, polls, political, political surveys, we are usually faced uh, to these uh, uh, four categories of, of actors. So that we are uh, living now is about uh, the paradox that we uh, usually meet uh, face all these uh, uh, actors. For politics, for example, politics, they are for political polling when they are well classified. So when uh, we present, for example, vote intention or popularity of political leader, when these are well classified, of course, they, are, uh, they react to us with the positive commands. Uh, and they are, of course, happy for uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of, of surveys and data. But uh, as soon as they're in downward curve, they are against with uh, barometer or with, uh, with survey and with uh, polls are there. Many criticism uh, come on us. About the media, the attitude of the media is shifting. So, uh, in one hand, there is a positive reaction. The rea positive reaction because they need the data. They need the results of polls and because they attract prime time viewership. But also, they are positive. They, are, they, they, uh, they express their positive reaction because journalists need an objective measure in order to properly master their political debates. The negative reaction of media consists on, so sometimes they, they want too much to, to claim journalistic independence. So if we are critic, critic by a political, they would like to be on their side, for example. Or sometimes we can be in face of journalists or media who are not independent. So they have some uh, political color, some political orientation. In this case, of course, they are against polls. What's about government? The government, so if they are judged and evaluated positively, they are, of course, happy and uh, no problem uh, 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 with uh, with uh, with polls and with political uh, data. And the other side, they would like to be the garden of the law. So, in this kind of situation, they are very critics there, and they manifest a big criticism against uh, uh, political polling. The the fourth uh, actor is the elector. The elector uh, are, we can find the reaction in, uh, in uh, two moments. The moment, for example, when the election, uh, where we are, when we are closely to the election, they are waiting and they are, uh, they, they express very interest to exit poll, for example. And uh, for uh, before three months, two months, one month, and some days before election, they are waiting the result of political polls. And the other hand, in the other uh, in the other period, uh, so uh, the rest of the period, especially uh, when his party, when the party of citizen is le or leader is losing moment they express a negative criticism. But uh, for all the actors, of course, especially the first uh, three, that means uh, politics, media, and government, that despite the criticism they call on us for confidential and uh, non-publishable -publish 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 survey. So this is the reality, this is our situation. And as we have a Tunisian proverb that say, I don't leave you, I don't love you, but I can't live without you. So uh, we say in Arabic, 
this is uh, the reality that uh, that we are fa facing uh, every day. So, um, in general, there's also we uh, we uh, we can uh, see uh, uh, a common attitude to all these actors. So uh, those who want to silence the polls because the result do not suit them. This is a, a first common attitude. A second common attitude, those who cannot read numbers and do not understand statistics. We found this among citizens. We found this among journalists, media, and we found this, find this also among politics. Then the third common uh, attitude is th those extrapolate the results with bad and exploit the result for the question of the sensational, and mainly about media. They would like to just make sensational and make that we need the buzz, for example. But never, nevertheless, there is uh, trust is there when they need us for actor uh, for politics for example they need us to build their program to build their electoral campaign to need their communication strategy media also they need us because uh, they they need to uh, to show an objective information an objective uh, and the real uh, data to balance the political debate in the real direction, in the good direction, and do not let a political dominate and give to public opinion a false position of his party, for example, or for his image, or for his notoriety, for example. But in all cases now, uh, when we, we conducted in the past, for example, uh, uh, an opinion polling concerning the, the trust in institutions, and we found that uh, now, actually, in Tunisia, the trust in media is dropping. So only 52% of Tunisian, like you can see, uh, have a, a trust to, to media. And uh, today, the political party, for example, only 15% of citizens that have trust to political party. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Nabil. When is the date for this slide? When was this survey taken? The, the survey was taken after 25 July. Uh, last year. This is very important. Because before, so this is conducted in, uh, in, in September, uh, to uh, last September. Okay. Okay. So, just to finish now, as everywhere, everywhere in the world, so uh, there are good and bad polls. And also, like everywhere in the world, there are those who believe in polls and those who don't. Worse still, there are also those who believe in polls, but pretend not to. But there are almost all anonymous, in general, citizen journalists and political leaders that polls have a relatively high potential for influence. So in conclusion, be that as, the, as it may, we must always continue to play our role and respond to criticism on the merits. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nabil. Uh, yes, I'm looking for the slide. Thank you to, to make sure that you finish. Thank you for saving uh, three to four minutes for, for our uh, discussion. Uh, this is also an interesting subject about how people trust, how people, de people deal with the data, different actors de deal with the data. Uh, uh, there is a saying that uh, maybe I can change it. If you want to 
make everyone happy. Don't do pooling and don't be a pool star. Yeah, exactly. Sell ice cream. Just sell ice cream. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Uh, now let me move to uh, uh, Munkhid uh, Dagger, our next speaker, uh, whom will be talking about also uh, an interesting subject uh, of how to meet uh, quality and the trust challenges for pooling in the Arab uh, region. Uh, please, Dr. Munghid, the floor is yours. You are muted, uh, Munghid. Thank you, uh, Samir, uh, Samir. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and hello to everyone. I can see that uh, uh, we have a wonderful audience. And uh, I hope that uh, I can share some of my uh, experience uh, in working in hot zone areas, uh, especially in, in Iraq. Uh, hopefully that uh, can help and highlight uh, the abstracts uh, that we are facing on daily basis doing our work as Polistar. Since the first day that uh, I and I, my team uh, started working on polling um, and we initiated the first ever poll in Iraq history that was uh, just two weeks after the, the invasion. Since that time till now, uh, we came across a lot of things that I really wish uh, that uh, my colleagues uh, will not face. Uh, I have lost uh, interviewers beheaded uh, by Al-Qaeda. I have uh, uh, tens of my uh, interviewers and my staff uh, either sent to jail, uh, prison, uh, torched, etc., etc. Uh, but I do believe that, uh, as Jan Jack Rosso said about public opinion, uh, it's the most important uh, law uh, in any for for any state, and it is the the law which is really not written on paper, but in the hearts of of the people. And if we want to, to win the hearts of the citizen, of the people, and the people, we should understand uh, what is in their mind, what is in their, uh, in their hearts. Working in a semi-democratic or non-democratic atmosphere is very difficult for any polyester. Let me start with sharing some slides with you. So, the polling environment. I do believe that as life in, in general, politics in particular, a trust is uh, uh, the cornerstone, not only of life and politics and social relation. Trust is the cornerstone for what I call polling capital. Without a trust, you will face endless uh, uh, hurdles. You will face uh, uh, a lot of problems and you will end up with uh, uh, nothing really benefits from the polls that you do. Uh, in, in our environment, we have, as uh, uh, my colleagues highlighted before me, uh, or uh, previously, sorry, uh, we have uh, three important uh, blocks. We have three important clusters. The decision maker uh, a cluster, uh, the uh, researcher and intellectual cluster, and the public. And the as pollsters and as polling firms, I do believe that 
we are the mediators, we are the channels that can link all these three and can play a good role in linking all these three uh, uh, important uh, uh, factors or clusters uh, in the uh, in the atmosphere or in our uh, atmosphere. Excuse me, Munqiz, are you moving the slides or still in this slide? No, I am moving. Because I don't see the slides moving. Yes. So you just gotta move your slides so we can see what you're talking about, Munqiz. I, I am moving the slides. I don't know I, why. Because I'm getting, I'm not seeing you're moving and also I'm, I'm seeing the chat now a lot of people saying they're not seeing it moving me neither Let okay me, uh, okay how to we got an advice just to reshare your uh, screen yeah now what can you see the this, this yes yes now, wonderful longer go ahead all right all right so now uh, we have these three clusters, public, decision makers, researcher, and intellectuals. And uh, as a, a polling firm, uh, we are the linkage between these three blocks. Now with every single block, with every single uh, uh, cluster, we have a distrust problem uh, and this distrust problem is huge in our in our world, as uh, our World Value Survey uh, data shows that uh, distrust is uh, one of the the main uh, topic, main problems that we are facing in our life. Uh, despite that, uh, the the uh, the rates of distrust uh, in others in the world, according to the World Value Survey, the last wave is 31.5%. Uh, this decreased sharply in Iraq, which has the lowest ever trust in other, uh, which is 11% only. And uh, uh, this very low, rate of trust make everything suspicious look suspicious and uh, uh, with the conspiracy theory that control everything in our life it becomes very difficult to exercise polling uh, in this uh, atmosphere let me go, go through every single block uh, quickly and then i will share you some of my uh, company uh, challenges and how we were able to overcome these challenges or meet these challenges on the public side and you know on the public side when i say the public it means respondents and uh, respondents rate though iraq has uh, uh, when we started the response uh, uh response rate was more than 90 percent now it decreased to around 75 percent everything is done face to face uh yet uh, we still have a very high uh response rate in comparison with, with other countries but this did not come with uh, or free of tax uh, this comes with a lot of sufferings this comes with a lot of efforts by the, the team, and I will show you some of the tips how we met the challenges uh, for trust among uh, our people or our respondents. So the trust challenges on the public side, we have, uh, for first of all, in Iraq, we have different languages. You have to overcome the, the language uh, uh, problem in the country. You have uh, a very wide uh, uh, belief in conspiracy theory. Most people think that we are spies. We are spying. We are 
foreign countries agents we got our money to uh, to, uh, to collect data uh, about about our country to to give it to zionist uh, to us to whatever so we have always we are facing our our teams always faced with with this uh, uh, dilemma we have the security challenges as i've told you i have lost the three of my uh, interviewers uh, many beat it by militias uh, sent to jail by the government uh, everyone looks suspicious to you and what you are uh, doing why you are doing that why you are asking these questions uh, we have also the conservative culture uh, very sensitive issues you cannot touch and with, for instance, the World Value Survey questionnaire, which uh, uh, asking about do you believe in God or homosexuality uh, in, in a culture like Iraq, these are taboos that you cannot touch. So how can you uh, uh, make your uh, interviewers feel comfortable when they are asking these questions? Um, of course, we have the corruption problem. So due to corruption, there are a lot of problems that you are facing on a daily basis, uh, which request a quick response to, to solve a problem. We have poor infrastructure for transportation, for instance, uh, communication, the uh, internet, uh, the electricity, a lot of issues. All these things makes the the uh, the life of the interviewers uh, uh, very difficult and needs uh, a practical solutions to face these or to to meet these uh, problems. So. What, uh, we, what we do uh, usually, uh, we are, or we have a lot of techniques. We developed a lot, a lot of techniques, steps, uh, uh, tools to, to face uh, such problems with, with the public. For instance, uh, we use local teams. Every single, in Iraq, Iraq is a big country with uh, around, 220 different districts. So you have to have uh, teams from these districts uh, who can gain the, the trust of the people. You should have- yes. uh, uh, your, The solutions are very wonderful. So I want you to concentrate and go quickly in three, four minutes of the solutions, how you dealt with this trust. Great, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So- uh, Four minutes. Okay. Four minutes. Uh -huh. Four minutes. Four minutes. So, <laughs> uh, permissions. Uh, you have to get a lot of permissions from different sides, including militias. You have to get their permission. You have to know how to access to, to, to people. With the uh, uh, influencers, you have a lot of uh, issues with them. Uh, you have very polarized. Uh, 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 intellectuals or, or elites or influencers. Everyone wants you to, to say something good about, uh, about him. You have the conspiracy, as you, uh, I've told you, the misunderstanding. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, issues and in the, since I don't have time, I will skip all these things and go uh, uh, in, directly to uh, uh, some of our, I, I, I will uh, call it uh, Ajax or uh, my company inventions to improve uh, uh, quality. Uh, so uh, these especially uh, uh, since 2016, we have moved to a fully uh, uh, automized uh, experience, uh, experience uh, where we have uh, a script for all our questionnaire. In that script, uh, we embedded 
uh, uh, very strict uh, rules that can discover uh, every single fraud or uh, 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 wrongdoings uh, among our uh, interviewers. Uh, we have, we are listening to every single uh, interview. Uh, we uh, we have a very sophisticated uh, uh, software that can discover many things. Um, a lot of technical issues that we did in scripting, like as you can see here, we have digital maps which can allocate our interviewers where they are, what they are doing, etc., etc. And uh, also we did uh, four different uh, initiatives uh, to make uh, our uh, company looks as not data collection company. We are not data collection company. We are a research company that provides uh, uh, some good insights for our society. So, for instance, we are doing what we call Iraq uh, 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 Iraq uh, opinion thermometer. We uh, uh, have an index, publish it, uh, make public event about it, trace the public opinion and release it uh, to, to, to public. We have uh, what we call Iraqographic. Uh, every single week we have a newsletter sent to everyone to tell them about the main topics in Iraq, whether about election or about uh, uh, other things. Uh, I ask social responsibility. We, we have, uh, as you can see, our, uh, uh, our staff doing a lot of different things uh, as part of their social uh, responsibility, uh, using media in a very effective way. Uh, I'm always on, on media trying to show uh, uh, numbers. I always have my own uh, uh, polls, not the client's polls only. So we are talking ab uh, about issues, about uh, the social networking, about uh, child uh, abuse, uh, about uh, women rights, etc. Many different public issues that can attract the media and give more legitimacy and make our work more transparent. Transparency is the most important issue for anyone who is working in this uh, uh, hostile environment though. Transparency have, uh, has its own risks, but uh, taking these risks uh, are much better than uh, keeping uh, uh, yourself in dark because some people, some pollsters I saw in Arab countries and in the MENA region, they do believe that keeping themselves uh, hidden and uh, 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 keep their faces under the table, that will help them uh, uh, but uh, my, my, my experience uh, telling me that uh, going to, to public, uh, interacting with decision makers, with uh, uh, public, with media, with intellectuals, uh, showing yourself as not a data collection firm, but rather a, a, a research, uh, company because research has a very good re reputation in the yeah. Arab world and in this region. Thank you and hopefully we can uh, or I can uh, answer some of your questions uh, to, to give more highlights about the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Munkad, for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, presentation as all before, meeting quality and trust challenges for pooling in the Arab region. Now we have a half an hour for a discussion and we will uh, use the Q&A icon to see the questions we have there. I know there are some questions in the chat, so we will look through them. Maybe Senior can help me in the chat and I will see the Q&A. And please, if anyone who would like to speak and ask in a one or two minutes maximum, 
please just raise your hand and we will allow you to speak. Okay, let me go to the first Q&A, then we will go to the chat. Uh, we have a question from uh, Bashar. He's saying is one of the issues regarding trust uh, is that people don't feel the results of the survey uh, reflecting on the government decisions. Uh, they feel they're just doing research without real action, just uh, a research. How can we deal with this issue? So uh, maybe we can take Faris since he talked about uh, public policy and decisions in two minutes. Sure. Then we um, yeah, sure, thank you. Go ahead, Faris. Um, thank you very much. It's a very um, interesting question. Um, actually, just to be sure, um, let's not uh, deceive ourselves. Um, not everyone believes in, in polling and survey research. Um, those who do, they make sure that they get the data, they use it, and they understand it, and they build uh, their policies um, around that data. Um, I have been involved in, uh, in governance issues uh, since the year 2011 in Jordan, uh, working for the Royal Court, then um, um, uh, in the government. Uh, in both places, um, I think the uh, involvement of survey research and polling in uh, decision uh, in the policy and policy making um, has been tremendously helpful um, for the state of Jordan. Um, whether it's um, during the um, uh, hard times or the good times, um, data was coming in all the time, um, whether it was um, sponsored or commissioned uh, by the government or um, through independent organizations, they do uh, and publish these uh, results and then share that in, um, in a public forum. We do this all the time and we get a lot of interest from um, various institutions, uh, private and public. So I think it is uh, the issue, uh, first of all, the data must be valid, must be reliable, must be trusted. And those who do that uh, work also must be able to understand the relevance, the meaning and the implications of the data at hand. Um, it is never enough to say 20% of Iraqis or Jordanians or Egyptians or Tunisians or whoever um, say this. That is only a number that needs to be verified, needs to be um, um, researched and to understand what are the policy implications. Usually the way I go about this to make it relevant to public policy um, and to make it um, useful for people in, in government who are looking for information to improve and to rationalize um, their policy planning process is to put it in three segments. First, what is the issue? Define the issue. What is the issue? What are the implications of that issue? And this, what is the recommendation? It's a one page maximum where you can really um, make the data relevant to public, poli to public policy uh, practitioners. The, the, the bad news is that when you have um, people who don't know um, good data from bad data, for example, today you have a lot of polls online, Facebook polls or Twitter or Instagram or other places. Um, and people would say 20% uh, of Jordanians or Iraqis based on Facebook. Uh, these are not representative information, not representative, representative data, simply because there are two biases. One of them is to be connected to the internet, is to have a Facebook account, is to be able to, uh, to have the time to. So there are many limitations that would make that data um, actually misrepresentative rather than representative of the issues at hand. And if a policymaker responds to that um, and takes that as the only source of information for policy formulation, then that policy is going to hit the wall. And with it, the, with the consequential uh, practices or um, uh, action plans or actions that will, will follow um, as a result of that. So my strong recommendation is to always have a representative data, a representative sample, compare it to other um, types of samples at other types of data collection modes, but you have to be always be extremely careful with that because you don't want to misinform 
policy, mm -hmm. uh, public policy uh, people uh, to make the wrong decisions that will have negative impact on everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Faris. And I know, I hope I can hear you more because you have a uh, different hats. You're making policy some of your uh, time and you uh, producing numbers. So that uh, will be interesting to hear in this subject. But let me see if Murtad and Nabil have wanted to comment on this or we should we move into uh, another questions? Uh, Murtad? Yes. Uh, for me, I mean, I don't see that this is a strange uh, a trend. Uh, this happens not only with the public opinion surveys. I mean, the decision makers uh, uh, or decision making everywhere, not only in our world, but especially in our world, is not a fact driven uh, uh, decision. Um, so usually, uh, decision makers uh, not pay a lot of attention, uh, but this should not stop us uh, from uh, keep working, keep uh, interacting with the public. Right now, I think the the uh, the social media, the uh, the new uh, technologies enable us as polisters to to have uh, uh, to to have more space uh, to uh, communicate the voice of the people to, to the decision makers, whether they uh, uh, depended on that and why they took it or, or not. I think our job as pollsters is not to, uh, to enforce to, or to impose the uh, our force our public force on the decision makers and enforce them to 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 do it our main job is to reflect the public attitudes the public perceptions the public feelings this is our main uh, issues yes mm -hmm. it is disappointed to to see uh, uh, decision makers not uh, uh, following uh, the these numbers or uh, these facts but uh, uh, our main job is it's we, we are like uh, those who are working in laboratory uh, we should give the numbers and then the doctors they have to their responsibilities either to uh, to give a good uh, uh, medicines or not okay thank you Murkhaz. i just have a quick comment we as pollsters we have to tell everyone, we don't want pol policymakers to follow all our results. This is something that uh, we should also train people. We tell them you can follow as much as you can because we don't want the policymakers to be a public style and the style is to do whatever the people want. We cannot, this is unlogic. They wanted uh, uh, more money, they wanted uh, more salaries, they wanted more, uh, uh, whatever benefits from the policy makers. They wanted cheap prices, whatever. But what we're saying is we just wanted to live, to follow as much as we can. This is the wise of the total of the people, but we have to deal with it in a different stages. Uh, Nabil, if you have a comment on this, because we have also double, different questions on the chat. Nabil, quickly in one minute. Uh -huh. You are mute, Nabil. Okay. But I'll, I'll go back, I'll come back to you, Nabil. We have also uh, uh, a hand uh, who's raising his hand. Then I'll come back to the chat questions. Uh, please, Navaidya, allow to talk. Go ahead, if you're ready. In one minute, please. Yes, am I audible? Yeah, go ahead, we're hearing you. My question is to the last speaker, Mr. Munkath, I think. And I really liked his presentation very much because it reflected a lot of what goes on in India and some other developing countries in Asia as well. So this is related to his slide on trust challenges on the influencer side, where he has spoken about polarization, conspiracy, misunderstanding, funding solutions being the challenges. Could you please throw some more light on conspiracy because there seems to be in this vast democratic country a lot of conspiracy theories which confuse the voters so if you could throw some light on that please go ahead Murkha. 
Thank, thank you. I think the, the most important uh, solution to meet that this uh, challenge is through providing uh, more numbers, more, transp uh, more transparency, publishing uh, uh, more, for, for instance, if we go back to, uh, to, to the pandemic and the transparency about the COVID-19, etc., the more, and we did research with some American colleagues on that topic, uh, and we published it in, in the Lancet. Uh, the, the more uh, numbers we publish uh, about, more facts we publish about uh, the pandemic, the less people become suspicious about something. There will be always some people who suspect uh, your motives, uh, uh, your uh, everything, but at the same time, you will win more people on your side if you are more transparent, if you show yourself, uh, as I've told you, not as a data collection firm. We are not data collection firm. This is, um, for me, uh, it makes me very nervous when I hear some people telling me that you are data collection firm. We are not data collection. And if we focus only on that, uh, uh, on that side, then we will be trapped uh, uh, in being spying, in being uh, uh, giving uh, or leaking uh, data to, to foreign uh, uh, countries, etc. We should show them what we are doing with that. We should show them uh, what is the benefit of this data for the society. Uh, I think this is the most important uh, issue in dealing with this challenge. Uh, thank you, Munted. Uh, let me just uh, quickly, as you answered, we have a, a question for you uh, from, uh, uh, I don't know the name, but it was, is there is, a trend to switch from face to face into telephone interview. A telephone interview. Do you think this is a trend in our region, in our place? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been always facing with uh, or face with with this uh, question. Actually, okay. of course, uh, telephone uh, interviews cheaper, maybe quicker, etc. But there is a main issue for me. Uh, of course, the, the length of the questionnaire, etc. all these things affect whether to do it face-to-face -face or, or in mm -hmm. the telephone. But the most important factor is trust, again. Because okay. in our region, with all these kind of conspiracies, questions about uh, to whom you are working, etc., you cannot pick the phone and ask people about whether they believe in God or not, or whether they, they see this government as effective government or not. No one will trust who is on the other side of the line mm -hmm. uh, with these conspiracies. So till now, unfortunately, I think with the current circumstances, with current atmosphere, with current environment, with current polarization in the political atmosphere, Telephonic uh, uh, interviews can work for certain works, for certain mm -hmm. topics, but in general, in more sensitive issues, in, in more political issues, uh, I don't see uh, uh, any possibility that telephonic or CATI can replace CAPI. Mm -hmm. Okay, Munkid, uh, this is another quick question to answer quickly. When you remember how pool, uh, how many pool surveys you did, how how much percent you think the policymakers obeyed or respond positively to your uh, to your uh, studies or your results? This is also for Nabil and Faris. Uh huh. After you, yeah. Okay, so uh, for me, uh, I can uh, say that I have done till now for the last 20 years, uh, not less than uh, 3,000 to 5,000 uh, nationwide uh, surveys. Mm -hmm. I, we have interviewed almost 2 million. Yeah, have... how many percent do you think they opposed you? Yeah, yeah approximately. So 
Decision makers, uh, I don't think that there are a lot. Uh, I mean, the percentage is low, but, okay. but we were able to be, to be an anchor for the opinion. So now the media, now the media uh, and the uh, uh, decision makers, when they have something, they mm -hmm. always either contact me or asking me for my my opinion about it. So you become an authority about public opinion. This is very important. I okay, think. so first, do you have just an approximate percentage? Uh, I, I, I don't have. A, a no, no, I mean, okay, thank you, Munkit. Faris, do you have a percentage? No, I, I just, I really, it's difficult to say a percentage, but I think it's more um, appropriate to talk about the type of issues that uh, policymakers would respond to surveys. Um, yeah. There's plenty of data to support that the um, economic issues, for example, when people define those are priority issues um, or uh, communication issues when there is a, a campaign of disinformation or misinformation, um, I think policymakers will pay attention to that and they will act swiftly. Um, so it depends on the topic, really. There is plenty of data, uh, for example, on um, the role of religion in politics. Um, this is a long-term thing. You don't have to respond to it now, but you take it into account in your policy planning. So mm -hmm. it depends. It depends largely on what topic you are looking at. Okay, Nabil, do you have an answer, quick answer on this? I don't see Nabil's video. Okay, let me move to the other. Uh, okay, let me take a question from the chat. I saw that uh, Claire was there and was raising her hand. Are you stay? Are you with us, Claire? Okay, she maybe put it there. Okay, Claire, would you like to speak? Go ahead. Uh, yes. You have, uh, you have yes. Six, six questions in the chat, so you have to get it quickly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, in, I just leave my. Q&R and just uh, wanted you to, in, in fact, I wanted Nabil also to speak about it. I hope he will be able to, uh, the, the ban on electoral polls, uh, whether you can carry electoral polls till the end, till near the elections and whether um, it is possible to, to have uh, an, an audit and see if your polls are, are good or not. And this goes with trust in polls in a way, because if uh, people don't trust polls, they will ban uh, polls before the election. And if they trust polls, it's better. So that was my question. Okay, thank you. Nabil, if you want to take it, if not, uh, as Claire mentioned, she has two questions in the chat. Um, Monka, do you want to take it? Did you do election pools, electoral pools? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have done a lot of election polls and uh, till the, uh, the silence day, which is 48 hours before the election, we were able to do a lot of uh, polls on that. Uh, let me uh, tell you about uh, how good it was. Uh, I can say that for the last week, uh, I have done for five different elections, uh, national elections that, uh, in, in Iraq. And uh, the results were, were almost uh, good to very good. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it comes, especially when it comes to the turnout, we were very able to estimate the, the turnout uh, for, for the election. So okay. uh, it, it was very difficult in the first year from 2003 to 2010. But now I think with the new technologies that we are using right now uh, mm -hmm. in our software and in our CAPI system, uh, we were much better uh, than uh, all other... Uh, Monkis, do you, uh, 48 hours, do you keep asking about the names of the candidates or uh, elections in general? Well, both. We do both. Oh, thank you. Faris, do you have a quick answer on, about that in Jordan? Mute, mute, Faris. Faris, open your mic. Huh? Um, yes, we do run election surveys. Uh, we've just finished one on the upcoming municipal elections and we'll be running another one very soon. 
uh, mm -hmm. probably a few before the municipal elections. We will do, continue to do until the um, day of silence, uh, which is uh, one day before the, uh, the elections. Um, mm -hmm. the, all, the, all the types of questions that are uh, necessary, we focus mainly on two things when we do this. First is the percentage of turnout, uh, voter turnout, and uh, the uh, drivers of uh, or motivations of uh, voters. Uh, these are the issues that we concentrate on more, more than anything else. Okay. Until uh, what time you still before the election? One that day. Was... Ah, one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the name of the candidates as well. Okay. We yeah. have another uh, questions in the Q&A from Nabil Kokali. Ahlian, Dr. Nabil. Uh, he's asking about uh, possible that government legitimates us the surveys do not interest them, but the truth is that they are afraid of the results of our surveys, especially that they are published all over the world and viewed by influential people. Therefore, we care about the public's opinion and do not do not uh, do not the responses of the officials and the governments. The question is: Do you agree with me? Uh, to whom is this a question? Because question, if or if someone wants to take it. Mm -hmm. I think I've already answered this. I mean, yes, okay. our main job is to, to provide, to highlight public opinion. This is our, regardless of whether people or decision makers will take it or not, uh, but eventually we will become the, the authority of, uh, uh, of public opinion, uh, if, if I can uh, call it. But I want to, to take, if you excuse me, to take the, the question of Juan uh, about, uh, sorry, Diaz Nicolas uh, about the, uh, yes, uh, Juan about the, uh, the role of the media uh, in the chat. Uh, he said that uh, whether we, we think that the, the current role of media is good or bad for, for polling. And I want to give very, very important Montez, we lost your voice. Montez, uh, right, until Montez come back to us, uh, I see that Nabil now is uh, logged in with Montez's name. <laughs> Nabil, are you with us? Nabil? Huh? Right. Faris, are you with us? طيب okay at least we have one one speaker with us I'm there yes can you hear me uh, yeah let me move to the other questions from um, uh, uh, Paul he said the media companies often mis misrepresent uh, pool in their rep rep reportage and most of the policy makers own the media houses do we have this problem in our in our uh, region that the media house are uh, may, uh, the owners are the policy makers, so they are mispresent. And I remember this rule, one survey, many interpretations or many explanations, especially from the media. So what do you think, Ferris? Well, uh, first of all, um, you have to be uh, ready and prepared. It is uh, uh, largely misrepresentation of your data uh, depends on the way you present your data to the public through the media, whether it's in your press conference or a press release or in an event where you launch your report or the result of the paper or whatever you are doing. I think it is you must control the message and you have to design the message in a way that will deliver, will be delivered as said and as intended. What makes uh, media representatives usually misrepresent the data is lack of knowledge of survey data and how to present it. And this is, we have done quite a lot of training on that to train journalists and media um, specialists, how to, uh, what kind of questions you need to ask um, in order to write a good um, journalistic report about the data that you are looking at or the published report based on uh, public opinion data. Now, there are, however, issues with people who have political agenda. Sometimes you get people 
using the data to advance their own agenda. They have all the right to do so. Uh, the only problem with that, when they, they skew the data in order to serve their interests. Otherwise, um, if, um, for example, a political party believes that another political party um, is not going to make it in elections or another candidate is not going to make it, make it in elections, and you have data that, support, that supports that claim, then it is their right to use it because it's already made public and it's published, so they can use that data. You then have to be ready to defend your uh, position and to defend your methodology because oftentimes the attack that comes back comes on the methodology and Thank the word of the question and all of that. But I mm -hmm. think um, these issues have subsided uh, uh, significantly. The more polls are published, the more people are mm -hmm. using those polls. Is these the issues have, have become less relevant, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Faris. Nabil, if you want to speak because you didn't have much time to answer. No, no, I, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, so I have a problem of connection. Okay, we have three minutes to, for the session. If you can speak in two minutes, go ahead. If you would like to to speak, or um, we go. I, the I, I lost the uh, I, I lost the question. So uh, okay, because I have a problem. Okay. Of, uh, I think we answered all the questions in uh, the Q and A. I have one in the chat. Um, we can just please answer. Yes or no? Uh, um, uh, Adam is asking if you had experience that you did not conduct a survey because the security conditions on the ground. So yes or no, Montez? I think yes, Iraq many, is. Many. Yeah. many. So, Paris, did you face this situation? Because of the we have always no, done our yeah. surveys. Uh, Nabil, did you face this situation? We have no problem of security, so... Uh, okay. I no. love the questions that have yes or no answers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then let me just quickly... Um, Nabil Kokali, uh, uh, a word that says that Palestine, there is no objection. Of, okay. Uh, we collect data and publish it freely. Okay. That's just a comment. I hope that I we answered all the questions. Thank you, Senia. She sent me also all the questions on the direct. And thank you for also organizing this um, uh, webinar uh, between uh, another time between Waipur and Wana. Wana is the regional chapter for our region. We hope uh, many people will uh, participate in, in this chapter, newborn chapter. And also, as we all the time at Waipur have different uh, sessions uh, online, virtually, the next session will be on March 25th. It will be about uh, democracy, uh, is democracy resilient? So we hope that you will join. You can follow our Twitter and other social media platforms to uh, register and to uh, be with us in the next webinar. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. And thank to our thank wonderful you, about again. 90 thank people you, uh, here today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That, uh, Simon and Xenia, and I'd I'm honored to have been with all of you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.